Hello, welcome to Lazada Insider, featuring knowledge that makes a difference. We share trusted insights, forward-looking perspectives, and exclusive expert interviews to keep you ahead of the curve. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Lazada Insider. My name is Yungsi, and I'll be your host once again for today. Before we start, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel so that you will not miss any future content. Now today, we collectively face the pressing challenges of sustainability, and it has become increasingly evident that we need more collaborative efforts and a sense of community to make progress towards a more sustainable future. This is especially relevant to our SMEs, who may face the challenges of resource limitations to tackle sustainability issues on their own. Joining us today once again are our panels of experts from Paldo IT and Saskin, and they will be sharing with us more about collaborations and communities in sustainability. Caroline, Paul, great to have you back with us today. For the benefit of our audience out there, could you please share more about yourselves and what you do? Perhaps we can start with Paul first. Hi, pleasure to be back. Um, so I'm Paul Blackley. I work for Paolo IT. We are a global innovation uh, transformation consultancy and agile software development company. So we specialize in supporting organizations in their transition and transformation into the future, uh, whether that's technology, leadership, ways of working, and the sustainability transition. I'm a sustainability and innovation lead, so focused on driving our internal sustainability offering, how we have more impact, coaching and consulting our clients on this transition, and uh, connecting with community and ecosystem externally is a really important part of that. Nice. Hi, everyone. I'm Caroline, and I'm the founder of Saskin. Also really happy to be back here. Um, Saskin is a B Corp certified social enterprise, and we are working essentially on driving sustainable behavior change. How do we do this? Through our Saskin app, which is a gamified rewards app that helps you to practice more eco and socially conscious lifestyle habits. And also we work with corporates and schools to support their green efforts and at the same time measure the impact created. Yeah, thank you both for introduction. So very quickly to Caroline, um, in 2022, you actually founded Saskin. Um, you have been uh, a Singapore-based community builders to connect eco and socially conscious stakeholders in a way that it creates mutual value. So since then, I think you have been are very active in facilitating numerous talks, workshops, panel discussions on how to create employee engagement and even drive sustainable behavioral change in organizations. So tell us, um, tell us more about your inspiration behind the development of the idea. Sure, sure. So, well, where to start, I guess. <laughs> if you're a little bit like me, you probably um, plan to go to the gym in the morning, but then you just hit the snooze button and sleep in. Or you say, you know, I want to have a sugar-free day today, but then you really can't resist that piece of chocolate in the afternoon. So we all face this challenge that we, what we want to do and what we actually do is not the same. And so this is what we call the intention-action gap. And so when trying to become more su sustainable, I also face this di dilemma all the time, right? What can I do with my old clothes? Or where can I find more sustainable products? How can I stick to what I've committed to? And that's essentially what motivated me to create Saskin, a tool that helps me to make my sustainable lifestyle choices more accessible, more fun, and more rewarding so that I can follow through with my good intentions and then also create positive impact. So essentially, the journey started with um, a need that I faced myself and talking to other people, I realized that um, this is like a common challenge that we all face. So essentially, then the app helps you to uh, not just you to take certain micro tasks, um, such as maybe uploading a picture of an item that you're recycling, uh, walking more, um, having a plant based meal, bringing your own reusables, and then um, through the app, you basically um, get um, a positive encouragement by earning points for doing the right thing. Sometimes our users will also say it's almost like a Pokemon experience um, whereby, you know, um, you you complete many different micro tasks throughout the day and then essentially, um, you know, like get rewarded with different types of, um, you know, like um, incentives and messages and um, that makes you 
makes it easier for you to get started on your journey, essentially. Thanks, Caroline. I think we can definitely relate to the, the personal challenges in adopting something new and definitely can feel your drive and passion in advocating sustainability, especially in a fun way. So now in the previous episode, we have discussed about sustainable transformation. So what do the, the both of you think about collaboration and community that can be important to our SMEs that are trying to transit into a more sustainable business model? Perhaps, Paul, you can start off with this. Yeah, so why why collaborate? I mean, it's such an, uh, a big and important subject. You know, it's the, the criticality that's really driving the collaboration as well in terms of uh, carbon, you know, reducing carbon and getting below or close to 1.5 is a major driver at the moment. It's a huge international challenge. You see countries for the first time signing up to mutilateral agreements, you know, 196 company, uh, countries, I think, for the uh, Paris Agreement, you know, that's, that's driven some of this. So collaboration is really important. These are global issues. These are big issues, complex issues. Nobody has uh, all of the answers or the solution. I think it also requires interconnectivity between stakeholders. So even on a local level, um, the goods that we're buying from, their source, their origin, how some of those materials are extracted and refined and used all the way to up to end of life where our products end up in the marketplace, the responsibility, the increasing responsibility we have around that, their end of life, the recyclability, reducing them going into waste. So um, collaboration, I think, is important there for greater connectivity and learning. I think the subject can also be quite anxiety inducing. We talked about that a little bit on the last session. And so um, building confidence, learning from others, uh, not reinventing the wheel, having that burden, um, getting the energy and the excitement when we, you know, we're able to move forward as a community. Uh, yeah, pick, pick other solutions that might, you know, be working elsewhere, tailor them for our own context. I think these are all really important aspects. Um, yeah, there are patterns that are already working and then there are new patterns that we need to kind of dis discover collectively. So community and collaboration is a, is a great tool, sometimes often underutilized, I think, um, and to meet some of the, yeah, the big challenges of our time. Yeah, I, I can only echo what, what Paul is saying here. So, um, many of the, also many of the challenges that we are facing are fairly similar. And I think there's a lot of power if we can come together and discuss some of these issues peer to peer. Because, um, uh, to give you an example, um, one of our partners is a clean beauty brand and they implemented a system to sell their products in glass containers and then got the customers to return them for reuse. And then we happened to speak to another brand, which was actually trying to do the same thing. But it turned out that they um, had some issues w about the sterilization process of these glass containers because that's an important part of this whole thing to work, right? And so because of that issue, they were stuck and they didn't know how to move this initiative forward. And so we managed to connect the two brands and just got them to share, you know, like experience and exchange. And so um, this is just an example of how very small connections can bring win-wins, right? And ultimately, it's really about... Um, um, you know, like having that openness to share and to embrace, you know, um, that there's, uh, you know, like um, competitors, which can essentially, but at the same time, also be your allies to to drive forward and to create change in the end. And Caroline mentioned at the beginning, you know, both Sustain and Paolo IT are B Corp certified companies. So mm -hmm. one of the benefits, yes, it's a certification and, a, and an assessment framework that, you know, helps you to be accountable and gives you some ideas. But it really is a community, a community of businesses yeah. that share the same values and principles around business for good, you know, social, environmental contributions. And um, so, yeah, coming together in, in these type of communities can be extremely powerful. Thanks, thanks both of you. Um... The next question I have is actually for Paul. Um, Paul, will you be able to share with us some typical formats of collaborations that you have observed or even recommend to our SMEs? Sure, yeah. I mean, uh, I guess this is one area of Paolo IT's uh, core business, you know, specialism is around facilitating and bringing different stakeholders together to better collaborate and work, whether that's internally, you know, building community within the organization, breaking down silos, finding those interested early adopters that can come together, share patterns, grow and learn and bring other people into that journey. So we, we operate a lot around communities within organizations, but then also, of course, externally as well, learning across industry, um, collaborating. That could be from 
webinars. It could be from panel discussions. It could be from f creating forums. Um, so various different form formats that that can take place. The sessions themselves can be uh, different as well in terms of yeah, panel experts speaking on a panel. It could be leveraging hackathon or open space technology where actually uh, we're looking to crowdsource the wisdom of the crowd, facilitate that in empowering ways to create more idea generation and give agency and empowerment to to, to more diverse uh, um, contributions. So I think those are powerful areas. Uh, we also see uh, collaboration in terms of maybe business chambers or councils. So actually coming together in those niche areas and you don't have to be uh, from a particular nationality even to join a, a chamber. So anybody can join the British Chamber of Commerce, you know, and benefit from that type of community. But there are other uh, councils and forums like the uh, Singapore's National Sustainability Forum for Procurement, another um, really interesting area. So these are companies coming together across industry, across multiple industries often, uh, to share and learn and build best practice, build policy, to be able to then take that back into their organization and deliver it effectively. Yeah. Um, so then to the both of you, um, could you let us know, you know, share about how Palo and Sasgain are actually collaborating on a community? Sure. Actually, um, we identified that many of the corporates we work with safe, uh, face very similar challenges when it comes to implementing sustainable solutions in their company. And I guess both Palo IT and Saskin are in this um, interesting situation that we gonna you know like speak to a lot of them and we hear a lot of these problem statements that they are facing something like how do we boost engagement of our employees how do we get the key stakeholders on board and how do we get their buy-in or how do we measure the impact that we are creating right and so as these kind of themes kept coming up over and over again we decided um, to team up with like-minded partners like palo it and the green collective to put together an event which we call beyond the scopes which is essentially a peer-to-peer -peer quarterly workshop and networking session um, where we discuss together strategies to drive sustainability engagement in our organizations. And the objective is really just to, um, I'd say, leave our maybe um, titles or corporate backgrounds a little bit aside and really come together on an individual level and to be open to not only discuss the success stories and the things that are maybe working very well, but also to be um, um, comfortable enough to share maybe some of the challenges or some of the things that we tried that didn't work because I think there's a lot of learning in that and if we can create that kind of trusted setting amongst peers to bring this out we can accelerate the learning process quite a bit. I think yeah just you know adding to that it's around uh, uh, also you know expanding your horizons expanding your thinking expanding the options and that are available to you and I think you made a really good point before around sometimes, you know, and, and we're so busy within the business, we're working uh, in the business, you know, day to day, and it can be really beneficial to step outside of the business, start working on the business and not just in the business, uh, think more holistically, get fresh ideas and input. And so that's where we've seen a lot of value in the community groups that, that Caroline is running. And, and I think it goes even broader to that. So earlier in the week, Paolo IT hosted an event by uh, Matura Initiative, which Caroline and Suskane was also on the panel for. So you start then connecting and cross-pollinating across communities and breaking down some of the additional silos and finding, you know, expanding your network um, and yeah, giving great hope and optimism to what is quite a difficult and challenging subject. Yeah, yeah, I can completely agree. I think these kind of sessions also um, really give a lot of emotional support because running, um, you know, like sustainability in, in initiatives in your organization sometimes can be challenging. It's not always going everything going smooth, and um, getting that extra boot boost of confidence that this is normal, this is just how long it takes, this is just like the roadblocks we might all face is really helpful because I always advocate for don't give up. You know, like see this as a long-term um, journey that you're on and um, keep keep working on it even if the progress is very small but it's important to um, follow through right great thank you uh, caroline you brought up an interesting point over there um, about openness open communication mutual trust so could you you know further advise our smes who want to collaborate effectively um, 
especially how do they overcome the concerns about potential competitions and even conflicting interests amongst companies? Well, so in my point of view, collaboration is always key. And um, the way I see it, at least, is maybe a bit idealistic, but what I, the way I see it is that the fight is really against uh, the enemy here is climate change, right? And we have that common challenge that we are facing. And um, so it's really not the competition against each other, but the competition against how can we faster mitigate the effects of what's happening to our planet, right? And so um, I believe there's always some potential common ground that you can find. And that's always a good starting point to try to identify where, um, you know, like there were synergies between different organizations and where um, there's learning potential. And um, I think also um, sometimes just taking uh, or like making the first step. I've, I've seen so many times that we assume that somebody is in a similar industry like we are and that we assume that a person is not open to to exchange or to share. And then in the end, it turns out that we actually are very aligned with our values and there's a lot that we can learn from each other. And so um, I think I really encourage everybody to maybe sometimes step out of the comfort zone to reach out to somebody who is in the same space um, to, you know, like just see where there's collaboration um, um, potential and um, to, to get started. I think this is a great area where we say, you know, sustainability and the, the complex, important challenges we face really do require a different level of thinking. Traditional thinking has been about competitiveness, you know, to win and to survive and we get our elbows out. Um, but actually, it's bringing it back slightly more to that saying that the rising tide raises all boats. And actually, there's a lot of commercial value in collaboration and even across industry, you know, we can we can improve. And, uh, you know, even through to modern movements like open space big in the technology you know where we actually put a lot of our ip freely to the marketplace mm -hmm. a lot of research shows actually this is of commercial value back to the organization so it's not a loss in terms of sharing some vulnerabilities sharing some ip sharing some of the patterns you actually gain a lot more out of it in the long run and finally to paul what are some resources that smes can look for to collaborate like with like-minded companies like yourself Okay, so we, we're probably talking a few areas here around building awareness, uh, you know, and updating and changing your thinking and connecting with community. And we're also talking about trying to bridge that gap to action. So I think there's a few different resources uh, across these spaces. There's increasingly learning available online, like United Nations publishing learning modules, these MOOCs, these online learning modules. So, um, you know, many of these are free, I would say, um, you know, for additional expert um, support, there are, of course, companies and coaching and consultancy and then there are you know the application like sustain which can really incentivize and drive behavioral change so there's more and more of these kind of options and solutions coming the i mentioned earlier the matcher initiative so both caroline and i work closely with um, community around the matcher initiative they've got a lot of great resources online they also are hosting and running events Paolo IT, we're frequently hosting um, community events, uh, either that we're running or that we're you know, hosting our, within our office space. So for those type of initiatives, you can go online to somewhere like Eventbrite or meetups com and actually register and you know follow uh, an organization that you see is hosting and running these events and you know kind of track the calendar and, and select which ones are of interest to you so that's a great way to plug into community um, i'd also say you know in terms of connectivity in community linkedin is a is quite a good place professionally follow thought leaders follow uh leading organizations a lot of um you know social media now is around sharing and sharing thought leadership so actually a lot of people do the work for you they go through the scientific reports they go through the learning modules distill some of the learning so that can be a, a quick way i don't know caroline if you'd have any other resources to add in i think these are all really really great tips um I, I think it's really about, again, trying to plug into one community and oftentimes it leads from one to another. And um, so, you know, like for me, for example, I ended up being part of a lot of different WhatsApp groups as well, which are all on different sustainability subject matters. And um, it's really just a wonderful support system to know, you know, like if you have a specific question, you can just like post your question out there and then there's others who are happy to share and to help you. And so I think it's very valuable, that type of informal sharing as well. I would say, I mean, we, we deliver climate for and digital 
collage workshops, you know, to to organisations. But there, we also offer them um, generally free to the public as well. So you could try one of those um, within your region, and this this is a global uh, movement, and then see how best you take something like that back to the organisation to to raise awareness and you know bring some vigour and aspiration around these subjects. So thank you once again to the both of you. I think today we can all agree that collaborations and communities are essential components of achieving sustainability goals. One of the benefits of collaborations is definitely um, they can bring together diverse perspectives and expertise like the panels we have today, Paul and Caroline, to uh, you know lead to more innovative solutions to sustainability challenges. Communities, on the other hand, can be powerful drivers for change, advocating a sense of shared responsibility and accountability, and even inspire in individuals to take actions towards sustainability. I think by working together towards a shared vision, I'm sure we can create a more sustainable future for our businesses and definitely for the future generations. We have come to the end of the discussion. Really appreciate Caroline and Paul for taking time off your busy schedules to share your insights with us. For the audience, who are interested to learn more, please feel free to check out the websites of Palo IT and Sasgain and even connect directly with Paul and Caroline. I'm sure they are happy to share with you more. Once again, thank you for tuning in. See you in the next one. This is the Zana Insider. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Make sure you click follow and subscribe so you don't miss our latest insights and expert interviews. Thanks again for joining us. Until next time, take care.